Thank God again that you're here this morning. I have a word of the Lord for you. And when I got this word of God, I said, Lord, I, I praise God that when I think of the things that I go through and things that some people go through, I have no reason to complain. And there's a lot of people who complain about things they're going through this morning. I'm grateful today that the Lord gave me this message to give to you. Uh, one of those messages that makes you think. And when I got this message today, it, it made me think of what I have in my life and that I need to be th more thankful for what he's done for me, what he's given me. He's given me a wonderful life, a mother, dad who loves us, a family. Later on, he gave me a beautiful wife who puts up with me. And there are some people who can complain about things, but I don't complain. You know why? Because Lord has truly blessed me, and he's blessed all of us. I'm grateful for the time that the Lord blessed me with my wife, and I'm grateful that she's a great support to me. As we'll read about a wife in the Word today, we're going to be in the book of Job today, and I want you to take this home with you. We're going to be in Job, chapter 3, verse 1 through 12. I want you to think about, anybody ever said, why me? If you have a perfect life, you never said. Anybody had a perfect life? So has anybody ever said in your lifetime, why me? Whoever said that before? Every hand should be raised. Every hand. Why me, Lord? Why me? And if you're looking at this and, uh, in our, in, on the Internet, if, you, if you're streaming this on your Internet, I want you to know that this appeals to you. And I'm talking to everyone this, and wherever you're listening from, you may be in Florida, you may be in Russia, or you may be in California looking at this on the internet. But some of us, sometimes we, hate, we say, why me? I've even said it in my lifetime, why me, Lord? Why me? And we're going to be in Job chapter 3, verses 1 through 12, and in verse 23. He says, after this, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. And Job spoke and said, may the day perish on which I was born and the night of which I was, I, I was said, a male child is conceived. May that day be darkness. May God above not seek it, nor the light shine upon it. May darkness and shadow of death claim it. May a cloud settle on it. May the blackness of the day terrify it. As for that night, may darkness seize it. May it not rejoice among the days of the year. May it not come in the numbers of the months. Oh, may that night be barren. May no joyful shout come into it. May those cursed who curse the day, those who are ready to arouse Leviathan, may the stars of its, of its morning be dark. May it look for light, but have none, and not see the dawning of the day, because it did not shut up the doors of my mother's womb, nor hide sorrow from my eyes. Why did I not die at birth? Why did I not perish when I came from the womb? Why did the knees receive me, or why the breast should I, that I should nurse? That shows you that someone... Hates to be alive. Verse 23 of the same verse there. Hallelujah. Verse 23 of the same chapter. Why is the light given to a man whose way is hidden and whom God has hedged in? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you this morning for this word we're about to receive, and thank you, Lord. Lord, we know that there are some people who out there who may be looking at this sermon who have why me moments, Lord. And I praise God that 
the moments that we have is only because of what you instituted and what you are and what you've given us. And it's for our will and glory, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, I don't preach on my own strength, but I preach in yours. And I honor you and give you thanks. Please anoint these lips of clay as I preach your word in your precious name. Amen? Amen. Life is filled with why moments. Why do children suffer? Why, why is there a threat of war? Why, why does bad things happen to kids, young people? Why do children suffer in the world? Why does terrible things happen to decent people? Why do the wicked prosper while the righteous seem to have more? Have more tribulations and trials, their share of it. Why? 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 I'm sure you said why in your lifetime. Why's could go on forever. There are some why moments in our church, and that comes every so often. See, in the midst of his trials, that was Job's question. Job is asking why. Why revolves around why he was even allowed to be born. Through all of this, and we know the, the story of Job. We know why he was allowed to be born with such tragedy that was looming in his future, in his future. I'm not sure that we can ever adequately address the why question in this life. We can sufficiently address why the Lord let the enemy do in our lives do the best to turn Job's love for the Lord into hatred. But there is some help for us in Job's trials here. Why? Someone say why. Let me take some time today to preach and go back to a familiar territory on this. I want to preach on the question, why? Why me? Why? Why? And sometimes we think about that. Sometimes we say, why? Why am I in this stuff? Why am I in this trial? Why? Why? I don't intend to answer the question, but I do want to show you that even our why times have their place in our lives. I want, to, I want you to see that even our why times are designed to mature us. Some of us, they may not, be even, they may not have that type of attitude, but it does mature us and helps us become more like him. Let's reconsider the ancient story of Job today as we consider the question, why? Now, let's start out with the tragedies of Job's life. See, Job, first of all, he loses everything. We know that his family, his wealth, he, he loses his fitness, he, his health, and his friends. And he's wrestling with the question, why? Job had troubles. We have troubles in life too, folks. We're going to have troubles. Solomon had troubles. David had troubles. Ecclesiastes 2 and 17 says, Therefore I hated life, because the work that was done under the sun was distressing to me, for all is vanity and grasping for the wind. That's what Solomon said. John 16 and 33 says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, Jesus said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. See, none of us leave this life untouched or unscathed by trouble. But we got a king who's going to be with us through our troubling times. Now, now, trials will do one or two things in life. First of all, they can drive you to God. If you understand the Lord, if he's in control in all of our life, you'll understand this. Job 1, 6 through 12 says, says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan and came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro to the earth and from walking back and forth on it. I'm sorry. Am I reading the wrong thing here? Oh, I'm right here. 
Okay? Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around of all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on this person, on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Job chapter 2, 1 through 6. So he's now he's attacking all that he has. And he's passing the test here. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. And again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro from the earth and walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him on the earth, a blameless, upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. And still he holds fast to his integrity. He passed the first test, folks. And although you incited me against him, you destroyed him without cause. So Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. Yes, all that man has he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh. And he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but spare his life. So, so Satan could not get him when he took his wealth, took his family. So now he wants to go after his health. He wants to go after his health now. You can rest on the sure knowledge that God is in control. That all that comes to pass in your life, he is in control. Whatever Satan wants to do, as he did for Job, as he did wanted to do for Job, he took everything. He took everything, family, wealth, everything. And then all of a sudden, he, when he passed the test, he said, Lord, now take his health. He's going to curse you and die. But God's with us, folks. Secondly, here's what troubles can do also. Here's what trials can do. They can drive you away from God. Some people react to their whys with anger. They become upset and because God didn't do anything to stop their why moments from happening. They leave the Lord and think they can find greener pastures elsewhere. And of course, there's not. Because there's more grief and troubles outside of God's will. The enemy by some means has told them that the Lord did this to spite them and, to, and has no more use for them. Then the why moments then turn into why do I find another source of comfort? Which may lead to negativity or sin. Our troubles can make us or break us. There will be temptations that Job could have yielded to. And when these events occurred in Job's life, he was faced with certain temptations. These are the same temptations we all face when trouble arises and when it haunts us. One temptation he could have had was he could have criticized or blamed God. He could have blamed God. The enemy addressed to God in, in Job 1.11, he says, But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. He also addressed God that Job will curse God about his health. Remember in Job 2 and 5, he says, But stretch out your hand now 
and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will surely curse you to your face. He could have blamed himself. Bildad, one of his so-called friends, wanted to convince and persuade him that it was all his fault and he was going to, that he's going through all of this. Job 8 and 1, 1 through 7 says, Then Bildad the Shuhite answered and said, How long will you speak these things? In the words of your mouth be like a strong wind. Does God subvert judgment? Or does the Almighty pervert justice? If your sons have sinned against him, he has cast him away for their transgression. If you have earnestly seek God and make your supplications to the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, surely now he would awake for you and prosper your rightful dwelling place. Though your beginning was small, yet your latter end will increase abundantly. He's blaming him. Listen. Let me tell you something. The enemy will try any means to accuse us. He will try to use friends and family, the closest people to us, and persuade us that we did something wrong and, and you need to repent for what you did. Let me read that in the Good News Translation. I, I, just, I, I got this this morning. He says, are you finally through with your windy speech? God never twists justice. He never fails to do what is right. Your children must have sinned against God. And so he punished them as they deserved. But turn now and plead with the Almighty. If you are so honest and pure, then God will come and help you and restore your household as your reward. All the wealth you lost will be nothing compared with what God will give you then. In a nutshell. See, he will try to tell us that we were not right in the first place for what you're going through. And people will tell you that there's something not right with you and you need to do something about it. That's what the enemy does to saints. That's what the enemy does to saints. One of the greatest benefits of suffering is that it reveals the true character of people around you. Oh, come on, folks. Y'all know that. And speaking of friends, we got some good friends, don't we? The Bible says that they came to comfort him in Job 2 and 11. Came to comfort him. All they did was compound and execute one attack after the other at Job when he was down. How many know the enemy will get you when you're down? He's dirty, he's low down, he's nasty. He'll get you when you're down. And he doesn't care. Look at what they said to him. Eliphaz. The first one is one of his so-called good friends was Eliphaz. This is the man of testi a testimonial experience here. He has already been there and done that. No matter what you go through, this kind of person has it worse. I know some people like that. Do you know someone who, who, who like that? That, that gloom, despair, and agony on me person. That if I had no bad luck, I had no luck at all person. That kind of person that if you listen to them long enough, they will bring you down. If you're not careful. Uh, uh, Phil, play that for me, please. <laughs> Y'all know that person like that? My wife was so unhappy, she started to pack. Talking to wife. But I figured I could get us back on the right track. So I give her a weekly allowance, but you fellas know how that is. So she spent it before I had a chance to borrow it back. <laughs> Even got the dog dressed up. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Listen to this next guy. Oh, they think they've got troubles. I just moved into a new town, and I got run over by the welcome wagon. Hallelujah. Now, y'all know y'all know some folks like that, don't you? Hallelujah. I wanted to put that in because I, see, I know some people who will cry like that. But I'm grateful I got a wife that I don't have to worry about. That. <laughs> Praise God. But, but that kind of person, if you listen to them long enough, will bring you down if you're not careful. Man will fail you, but folks, Jesus cannot. Pro- Proverbs 18, 24 says, A man who has friends must himself be friendly. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And we know who that is. Praise God. And, and, and here's what Eliphaz do also. He flatters Job. He tells him what a blessing he has been. He really butters him up. He butters him up. And, and then he flogs Job. He accuses him of, of hypocrisy. He accuses him of being weak and, and his wickedness. And then he floors Job. He says that he is self-righteous. He's not accepted by God. He's simply getting what he deserved. See, people tell you, you're just getting what you deserve anyway. He has a bad attitude, he tells Job this. And and Eliphaz goes as far as to call Job an old windbag. There's more, but who needs a friend like that? Who needs a friend like that? And then we have Bildad. This is a man who, who uh, man of the traditional explanation here. Here's, he, he's, here's his attack. He calls Job an old wind back too. He's talking too much. And what was his appeal? He said, Bildak says that all these things happened to Job because he was a bad guy. Listen, he's accusing him. Then we got Zophar, his other good friend, his other good best friend, the man of total estimation here. He looks at the situation and he simply tells Job that he needs to repent for his sins and get right with God. And then these things wouldn't happen. In fact, he tells Job that that he's getting far less than he deserves, in a nutshell. Then you have Elihu, Elihu, the man of truthful expression here. He's a truthful expressionist. This man, he's just mad at everybody. He's mad at everyone. He says that, that everything you're doing is wrong. It takes, it, it takes this blabbermouth five whole chapters. And this is a blabbermouth. It took him five whole chapters to tell us that God is good and great and is fair. Still, he never does, do good, he never does a good thing for Job in all of this. God made it clear that Job's friends were wrong. The fact that God did not mention any specific sins showed that God confirmed Job's claim to have a, led a devout and obedient life. Job's friend made the error of assuming that Job's suffering was caused by some great sin. They were judging Job without knowing that God, what God was doing anyway. We must be careful, folks. Let me tell you this. We must be careful to avoid making judgments about a person because God may be working in ways that we don't know. God may may be working in some ways that we don't know. You say, oh, they're suffering because of this. No, it may be God's will. Folks, the enemy will by any means try to plummet you and weigh you down with accusations and other things when you are down. He he, he even used close friends. He'll use family. He is relentless and dirty like that. God is still on our side, but God is still on our side, folks. He will never leave us to ever forsake us. His children, he he, he won't do that. Sometimes we can say, Lord, why? I, 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 I can't bear this. But, but, but he won't put too much on you that you cannot bear it. Job could have forsaken God. He could have adopted the attitude of his wife. 
She says in verse Job 2 and I says, Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? She said, Curse God and die. Job was, ex- was experiencing extreme physical pain, as well as grief over the loss of his family and his possessions. He, he can't be blamed for wishing he was dead. Job's grief placed him at the crossroads of his faith, shattering many misconceptions about God. Job was driven back to the basics of his faith in God. Folks, when you get in trouble, go back to your basics in faith in God. He had only two choices. He could have cursed God and gave up, meaning he would have forsaken God. Or he could have trust God and draw strength from him to overcome. And that's what Job did. Many people react with bitterness toward the things that God allows in their lives. The deaths of loved ones, illnesses, and tragedies. All these events have the power to create bitterness within our hearts if we do not maintain the the proper perspective and motivation. With these hurricanes and with with these earthquakes and with things going on, it can drive people away from God. I'm sure during this time of all this happening, people are saying, why me? Why me? Why me? But this should drive them closer to God. I'm sure a lot of folks are saying, oh, Jesus, oh, God. They're saying that today. Like David at the death of his child, that was a why me moment. There's a purpose, and remember, God's purpose in trials is not to destroy us, but to perfect us. Anybody going through a trial today? No? Raise your hand if you're going through a trial. Anyone? Yeah? Yeah? I see some hands. Yeah? You're going through trials. Yeah? It says, Romans 8 and 29 says, For whom he foreknew... He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among the brethren. Ephesians 4, 13 to 15 says, Till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head Christ. At times, believers may actually suffer more than unbelievers because of those who follow God may be Satan's special targets. Believers, let me tell you about believers, therefore may have to endure hardship, persecution, and they may endure testing. We're going we're gonna to endure this, folks. This was a case with Job. We must be prepared for Satan's attacks. When we suffer, we must assume, we must not assume that, 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 that and, and, and come to the fact that God has abandoned us. He will never abandon us. He did not abandon Job. His eye and his hand was on Job at all times. Even though he was going through all of this suffering, trials and tribulations, friends trying to, uh, trying to load, unload guilt on him. At the same time, the Lord was holding his hand. At the same time, the Lord was, had his hand on him and never left him. Folks, let me let you know something. Lord will never leave us or forsake us when we go through trials. He is always with us, and he will never take his hand off of us. 
Consistent faith is the way to defeat Satan. Mm -hmm. Just as pressure Thank you, Lord. Just as pressure, heat, and time, they're needed to create a diamond. The same things are needed to produce saints. A diamond that's sparkling and glowing, a real diamond has to go through heat, time, and it goes through some pressure to become what it's become. Gold will have to go through pressure and heat to become real gold. So whatever happens, never give up on the Lord. Galatians 6 and 9 says, I'm I'm talking to someone here today. Let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. What was the testimony of Job's life? One thing what he did was he worshiped God. He renewed his commitment. This is not the reaction of most people that they exhibit. Going through trials and tribulations like that, he still worshiped God. And then what else he do? He witnessed. He said, naked I came. And in, 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 in Job 1.21, he said, naked I came from my mother's womb. And naked shall I return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Right then, Job declared his faith in God. See, see, one thing, God should not have to please us to get us to serve him. We love it when the Lord blesses us and he gives us things. We do, but we do not like it when the Lord takes it away. But the same God. The same God who blessed us and gives to us is the same God who also can take things away. Elijah at the brook lets us know about that. See, sometimes trouble comes because you are in the will of God. Let me say that again. Trouble comes because you are in the will of God. He makes us stronger. Sometimes I ask to answer, why, Lord? Why are you making me stronger? Why do I need to go through this to be strong? So you can be strong for the next test. God will bring a trial and tribulation to us to let us know that we are in his will. Let me tell you, folks, if you don't go through anything in your life, you need to Reevaluate your life. If the enemy is not bothering you, if you're looking at this, if the enemy is not testing you or bothering you, you need to reevaluate your life. Because if everything's going so smooth and everything is good, I'm happy, go lucky, then something is wrong. If you're not going through anything, reevaluate your life today. He wondered about this, but you know what? He didn't accuse God. He declared confidence in God's purposes. Job 42 and says, 2 says, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. And I can think of Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. Those who are called according to his purpose. And then he realized his limited perspective. Job 42 and 3 says, You ask, who is this who hides counsel 
without knowledge. He waited on the God. 42 and 5 says, Job, I have heard of you by the hearing of, of the ear, but now my eyes see you. He knew that he didn't understand it all. And we don't understand sometimes. We don't understand sometimes. We ask, why, Lord? Why? Why, Lord? Why? Why? But we don't understand sometimes. But therefore, what he did was, he said, but now my eyes see you. He placed his eyes on God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. If you don't understand what the Lord is doing, just ask him. Trust him. Understand. See his eyes that say, Lord, you're the driver's seat. Lord, you're the one that's doing the driving. You're the one that's guiding me. I'm going to keep you, keep myself in your hands. Ask him for understanding. Keep your eyes on him. And then, here's the good part. This is what you all have been waiting for. There was victory. Because he went through all of that, and, 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 and because he kept his eyes on the Lord. And there were moments, there were wide moments in all the Job. There were moments there with his friends, with his wife, with, the, with, with, his, with losing his children, his wealth, and everything else. Why? Why? But even through all of that, he said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Victory came because he stayed true to God. This is what Job is about, staying true to God, staying true to the Father. He finally saw that this was bigger than Job. Job saw that. It finally dawned on Job that all these things happened not because of his sins and not because of all the things he was accused of by his friends. It, he, he came to understand that all this happened for the glory of God. <laughs> Folks, when we suffer, when we do, when we go through things, it's all for His glory. If we can ever handle a uh, grip on that, it will help us greatly. We're still going to have the wide moments. But we need to keep our eyes on God. It's all life is about getting the glory to God. Getting his glory from us. Again, Job 121 says, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job had lost his possessions. His family. And in and, and, and this first round, he passed Satan's test. And, and then he reacted rightly toward God by acknowledging God's sovereign authority over everything that God gave him. He knew it was God who created and gave it to him in the first place. Know that whatever you have is taken away. It comes from God in the first place, and he can give it back. Job passed the test and proved that people can love God for who he is. And not for what he gives us. And I can think of the verse that says, I, I will bless the Lord at all times. Thank you. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. He marched home in the glory. Job 42, 6 says, Therefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. 
We're not going to be perfect, folks, in trials and tribulations. Some of the greatest prophets say, ask why. Moses asked why. Elijah asked why. Obadiah, he asked why. But you know, what was his restoration? He gave him back twice as much as he got. God can give you better things than those you might have lost or what you worried, worried about losing. He can give you more. That's the way our mighty God is. Come on, smile with me now. Smile. Anybody been taken out of something and got more than they got before? I have. I have. You've been through something and the Lord seemed to give you more than you had in the first place. And see, what was his reflection on all of this? And I'm almost done. Joel 42 and 14 and, 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 and 15 says, And he also had seven sons and three daughters. Gave him his children back. And he called the name of the first Jemima, the name of the second Kizia, and the name of the third Karen Hopkapuch. In all the land there were found no women so beautiful as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them an inheritance among their brothers. And we are told, we're told that, that Job and his wife had ten more children. Three of them were daughters. We're told their names and, and the names of, God, of, those, of those girls revealed the condition of his heart. And this is what I, I love here. Jemima. Jemima. Here's Jemima. He gave the name Jemima. The day or dove. This name indicates that God had given Job day in place of his night and peace in place of his turmoil. Kizia. He, he, he gave Kizia fragrance, a beautiful fragrance, indicating that God had replaced Job's sorrow with the sweet smell of grace. And then he gave Karen Kapuch, meaning the box of eye paint. That's what that means. This word also used to refer to Moses when he came off the mountain with this face aglow with the glory of God. It refers to glory or brightness. Folks, when you come out of something like that, you're going to look brighter. The idea here is that Job is praising God that the fact that God has replaced his dejection and misery with glory and happiness. When restoration has been reached and completed, Look for a way to praise God. Thank him for your Jemima. Thank him for your Kizia. Thank him for your Karen Hapuch. Regardless of how miserable and dark the valley is, he is always there with you as you travel through it. All I can tell you is trust God. And he will allow you to taste the sweetness of his victory. I'm done. Psalm 115 and 3 says this as I conclude. It says, but our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he pleases. Are you looking at a wise situation this morning? Bring it to God. Why? Wise to the Lord. He knows we got wise situations. He knows we got those wise situations. Why am I going through this? Why am I put why, Lord, why are you putting me through all of this stuff? But just to let you know, folks, you're in the will of God. I put myself in that bunch. I find that I'm in this God, in this will. You go through something long and long ago, but you know what? The song says, trouble don't last always. And you're going to bring you out as pure gold. I think of the song that says, 
God, be patient with me. See, God is not through with me yet. When God gets through with me, the song says, I will come forth as pure gold. And God's going to bless us. If you have why moments, just let you know that the Lord is on your side today. And as I end, I want to ask you if you know Jesus today. If you know Jesus today, raise your hand if you know Jesus today. If everyone here, come on, raise it big and high. Be proud of it. I want to make sure that the people who may be watching us know that we love God and I want them to know that Jesus is at their at the door knocking on their hearts. Some people may be having some why moments, but you know what? The Lord Jesus can take care of our why moments. Again, if you're saved today, raise your hand for me again, please. If you're not today, uh, Jesus is waiting. And I want us to agree with people. Let us agree with people who are going to need Jesus today, who need Jesus Christ in their life today. I want you to bow your heads with me as we agree with everyone today. Dear Jesus, come on, say it with me. Dear Jesus, I thank you for listening to my prayer. I thank you for loving me enough to die on the cross for me. I thank you, Father, for my life today. I know I'm not worthy of your salvation. But Lord, bless me with your salvation. Keep me in your perfect care. And I want to be saved. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my trespasses. Make me a new person. Give me a new life. Make me whole. Make me clean. Make me pure. And I love you, Father. I love you, Father. Now I'm saved. Thank you for saving me, giving me new life, and let me see you better. And I honor you, and I thank you in your precious name. Amen. Give God a hand praise, folks. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you.